previously in the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup. Growing up in the Mii Plaza, all Pipe ever dreamed of was playing baseball. That dream has just become a reality, as he entered the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup with his first ever team, the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers. With the support of some great players around him, Pipe has had to overcome many hardships to get through the group stages. But the Steamers now find themselves in an even more daunting position, the Knockouts. Will they crumble under the pressure, or will they manage to reach the biggest stage of the Wii Sports world? The Baseball World Cup Final. After celebrating their progression through the group stage, that evening, all of the Stoke-on-Trent steamers huddled around the TV in the hotel lobby. The mood was tense, as they were about to find out who they were playing in the round of 16. And now, in sporting news, we take a look at the fixtures for the next round of the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup. Shush, shush, everyone, it's about to come on! Let's first take a look at which teams managed to get through the group stages. In Group 1, it was honours even between Lucia's baseball team and the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers, as they both finished neck and neck on 12 points. Also qualifying are the Salmon Fishers and the Pittsburgh Purples. Group 2 sees Yarikawa Prefecture make it to the knockouts for the 11th time in their club history, finishing just ahead of the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society. Coming in third was Bambra, and just sneaking in is Sporting Hokkaido. The British Museum Association baseball team found themselves out and out leaders of Group 3, followed by Herobrine Athletic, Bottle Jobs FC, and Turtlenecks United. And it's commiserations to tournament newbies under Passage Wanderers who put in a brave display. And finally, waltzing through Group 4 is of course the current champions, the Mordor Giants, with the Luigi's Mansion Ghosts a distant second, followed by fellow strugglers Bumfluff City and Dirt Munchers FC. And with that, now to the thing you've all been waiting for, the draw for the round of 16 matches. Oh, oh, turn it up, this is it! And if everyone's ready, I'll begin. The first match will be the Mordor Giants versus Turtlenecks United. Herobrine Athletic versus Lucia's baseball City. team versus Sporting Hokkaido versus Pittsburgh. British Purple. Museum Association baseball team versus Dirtman Ghost. And finally, our last match will be the Stoke on Trent Steamers versus the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society. Who? Gary Barlow? Oh no, said Mind Brain. Oh no, no, no. What is it, Mind Brain? Deary, deary me. What's wrong? <sighs> Gather round, everyone. You'll need to hear this. The Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society might sound pretty casual to those who don't know them. Yeah, it just sounds like a bunch of amateurs, to be honest. It's quite the opposite. The society, in essence, is dedicated towards Gary Barlow, a singer-songwriter and member of the 90s UK boy band Take That. But here's the thing, my friends, it goes much, much deeper. This is a society run on specialist recruitment and meticulous training. Each member is selected based on their undying love for Gary Barlow, and that love is used to form a team unity like you've never seen before. The result of this is known as the Wall of Hands, a name feared by even the world's best batters. Some say it's like everywhere you hit the ball, a hand appears. A mass of arms, all moving as one. In all their years in the competition, they've never conceded more than three runs. Well, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do what we always do. What we have done. We're gonna play baseball, goddammit! I mean, yeah, I figured that, but... They think they work as a team. We'll show them a team. Yeah, we'll show yeah, them a team. Woo, yeah, go, let's woo, do this, guys. Yeah, we'll let's show do this. The team. Right, everyone to bed. I want you well rested for tomorrow. Especially you, Pipe. We're gonna need a big performance tomorrow. But Pipe's nerves were making him dizzy, and by the time the next day arrived, he got so little sleep that he was late heading to the pitch for a warm-up. The only other person still at the hotel was Xavier, who always tried to turn up fashionably late anyway. 
The two of them left the team hotel and headed into the ground. But before they could reach the pitch, they were stopped in their tracks by none other than the captain of the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society, Haley, also known as Big H. Oh, look, it's that nobody Xavier. I heard you're famous for being in a shampoo advert, and you aren't actually talented at all. <laughs> Gary Barlow is way better than you. Pipe and Xavier did their best to ignore the taunts, but Big H was in Xavier's head. And due to the holdup, by the time they arrived, the match was about to start. The teams lined up, and the round of 16 began. Like always, Pipe was batting first, but as he stepped up to the batting area, he once again felt dizzy with nerves. And before he could calm himself, Big H had thrown a killer of a curveball. If anything, the spin on this curveball made him even more dizzy, and Big H took advantage of this by trying to trick him with a splitter. It was only on the third ball that Pipe actually managed to hit it. But lo and behold, the ball flew straight into the wall of hands. Pipe was out. Next up was Cardboard, who unlike Pipe, wasn't letting the pressure get to him. Huh, <laughs> bunch of snowflakes. But Cardboard's confidence was misplaced, and although he felt he had hit the ball well, yet again, the wall of hands were there to catch him out. This was a terrible start, and the pressure now fell on Barn Owl. Barn Owl prided himself on his precision and accuracy. If anyone was going to bypass the wall of hands, it would have to be him. But as he stood in the batting area, something strange began to happen. The whole crowd burst into song. It was one of Take That's most famous tunes, Back For Good. The song was so loud that Barn Owl's super senses were going haywire, and just to top it all off, Big H began to shout over the crowd. So you're Barn Owl, are you? I heard you were raised in the woods by owls. Aren't you embarrassed? For Barn Owl, this was the final straw. He misplaced his shot, and he too was caught out by the wall of hands. The steamers had scored zero runs in their first innings. Pipe would have to put in a good pitching performance, but as he threw his first ball, the Gary Barlow fans once again erupted into song. The atmosphere was making Pipe dizzy again, and completely by accident, instead of his usual fastballs, he began to bowl something known as a screwball. Having been trained by Big H, most of the Gary Barlow fan club's players were able to deal with this accidental spin, and if not for Scalene's strong arms, the steamers would have been far more than 2-0 down going into the second innings. Now it was Smaug's turn to bat, but imbued with the courage of a dragon, Smaug gave it everything she had, and finally, the steamers had scored a single. single. This gave a boost to Scalene, who was already on a high from her hat-trick of catches, and building up every ounce of strength within her huge arms, she unleashed a cannon of a shot, and hit the ball over the wall of hands, and out for a home run. This was it. If the steamers were going to win this game, the only way was to bypass the wall of hands and get more home runs. Well played, Scalene, shouted the steamers bench. We can do this, guys, she returned. But what she hadn't realised is that next up was Mind Brain, who was trying out a new tactic. Ha ha ha, let's see if the wall of hands can handle this one. My new tactic, the on guard. Okay, just wide, need to adjust by four millimetres to the right. Yes, a hit, good, and now all I have to do is swing my bat slightly and... Strike! Batter out! Curses, what am I doing? I never swing my bat. All momentum was now gone again, and even wrinkles with his samurai senses could do nothing but hit it straight into the wall of hands. You're out. Finally, it was Xavier's turn. The Gary Barlow fans began to sing once again. Oh, look who it is, it's Mr. Special! and Xavier failed to hit his first shot. But as he lined up for his second, something magical began to happen. The Gary Barlow fan song was overpowered by another, more familiar tune. It was Xavier's theme song. And spurred on by this, Xavier managed a big hit. It looks good. It was gonna go all the way, but it landed agonizingly just the wrong side of the post, and it was given as a foul ball. Heh, <laughs> I knew you weren't anything special. Xavier was caught out. 
Regardless of this, the Steamers were still drawing with the Gary Barlow fan club, and in an effort to make up for his bad batting, Xavier was running the field as fast as he could, to reduce the amount of points the opponents were scoring. This combined with the fact that Pipe had finally managed to calm his nerves, and a couple of tactical catches from Mindbrain, meant that going into their final batting innings, the Steamers once again had a chance to get that all-important home run. Feeling responsible for the way the Gary Barlow fan club had been able to belittle his players, the Steamers captain Engine Room knew he had to be brave. He too was no stranger to a slip in confidence, but this time, he had to muster the courage. Not for himself, but for Barnowl, for Xavier, for everyone. And, like a comic book hero, Engine Room swung with the weight of the whole team behind him. The ball flew high into the air and over the dreaded sea of hands. The steamers were now ahead for the first time in the game. This made the so-called Sea of Hands very angry. Only once had they ever conceded this many runs, and as a result, the Gary Barlow fan club ramped up their fielding, catching pipe out and reducing cardboard to only a single. This was when Barn Owl stepped up to the batting area again, and just like last time, Big H began to insult him. So where are these owl parents anyway? Do they even know you're playing, or are they just a bunch of animals after all? For Barn Owl, these words cut deep. It was true, his parents had never turned up to any of his games. But it's not because they didn't want to, right? I mean, they're owls. They don't have money, so they can't buy tickets. But what if they just didn't care? As Big H said, they were just animals after all. Feeling deflated, Barnell once again failed to get past the wall of hands, and with hope fading and doubt setting in, Smaug too was caught out. The pressure was now on Pipe. He had to get the Gary Barlow fan club out without letting a single run go, but he couldn't forgive them for what they'd done to his friends. Pipe was sure that Barnell's parents cared about him, and he knew Xavier was talented too. Pipe was getting more and more angry, but then, Wrinkles stepped in. Pipe, do not be consumed by anger. Instead, utilize it. Direct it not at other people, but into your pitching. And with this advice, Pipe's pitching reached a whole new level. Steph was fooled by his cunning splitters. Tatsuki couldn't even hit the ball. And Tyrone was so taken aback by Pipe's dipping pitch that he hit it straight forward and Pipe was able to scoop it up to end the game. The steamers had won, and they were through to the quarterfinals. What should have been great cause for celebration, though, felt weirdly undeserved. Although Pipe had pulled off some major heroics, on the whole, the team seemed downtrodden. What's wrong, everyone? said Engine Room. We've just won! We should be thanking Pipe! Won? interrupted Big H. I don't mean to be salty here, but you only won because of one player. Your pitcher, Pipe. Pipe felt uneasy. Everyone was looking at him. Here's my advice. You won't go far in this tournament if you aren't a team. She's right, Engine Room. I was rubbish, said Xavier. And I wasn't any good either, said Barn Owl. Nonsense! Codswallop! A load of old ass. We win as a team, we lose as a team. Now we don't have time for this. We're in the quarterfinals this afternoon, and we're gonna give it all we've got. And just as Engine Room said this, the matchups for the quarterfinals were announced. Ha ha ha, what hell? Thanks to that unexpected victory from the Stoke on Trent Steamers, it seems we have a feisty matchup this afternoon, as they will be playing the British Museum Association baseball team. The British Museum Association baseball team were comprised of many seasoned veterans. Each had experienced at least three Baseball World Cups already. Their only slight weakness was that to play for them you had to accept part-time volunteer work at the British Museum, which reduced the amount of time they were able to train together. But what they lacked in team togetherness, they made up for in individual brilliance, and their star player, Sabaro, had one killer trick up his sleeve that Pipe was about to find out about. Before long, the teams were once again lining up, and the game was about to start. That's when it happened. Saburo began to pitch, underarm. Pipe was caught completely off guard. Underarm? Why would anyone pitch underarm? Wow, that's so cool! 
Awestruck and unable to move properly, Pipe hit his shot straight to a British Museum fielder, and he was caught out. Next up was Spindle, who like Pipe was initially confused by the nature of Saburo's pitching. After missing her first swing, she decided to use her gaping mouth to suck in as much air as possible, oxygenating her brain and helping her to concentrate better. As a result, she was able to hit a double. Scalene, on the other hand, had already played her trump card, and her arms were yet to properly recover from her home run in the previous match. Like Pipe, she too was caught out, and Cardboard once again found himself in the hot seat. Luckily, as ever, he felt no pressure, and he was able to squeeze the ball in between second and third base with just enough power to be fumbled by the next British Museum fielder. The Steamers had scored their first run of the match, but as Smaug struggled to adjust to Saburo's underarm pitching, G2 was struck out and the teams changed sides. Pipe desperately wanted to give underarm pitching a try, but he knew that if he did, it could put the team's tournament chances in jeopardy. Ever since Big H had singled him out as the team's best performer, he felt an unwelcome spotlight which was making him nervous again, and with Barnell's confidence so low, Saburo was able to get a lucky single. Pipe's next few pitches were pretty good, an out followed by a single, but then Victor stepped up to the batting area. The Victor! Anyone who was anyone in the Wii Baseball world knew Victor, the man with the world record for the most home runs in a game. The spotlight Pipe was under was multiplied tenfold. He felt like he was being crushed under the gaze of the crowd around him, and predictably, Victor was able to do what Victor famously did hit the ball all the way for a home run. Within an instant, the Steamers had gone from 1-0 up to 3-1 down. Pipe tried to rectify this by pitching a couple of splitters, but they weren't quite working. It was now or never. He had to try it. Nothing else was working. He went for an underarm pitch. The batter returned with only a single. Not bad for a first try. He went underarm again, and this time, the batter hit it straight to him, but having been so focused on the technique, he couldn't sort his hands out quickly enough to catch the ball. And then, Michael stepped up. THE Michael. The famous Michael who'd almost single-handedly carried his team to the trophy just four years ago. It seemed practice was over, and Pipe would have to master the underarm pitch if he didn't want things to get much worse. It took him a couple of balls to get his bearings straight, but then, a strike and then a foul ball, and with one last dipping pitch, Pipe had struck Michael out, and now he'd got the hang of the underarm technique, he was able to wrap up the innings without conceding any more runs. It was now do or die. The Steamers needed something big to get them back into the game, but next in the running order couldn't have been a worse person. Low on confidence and looking dejected, Xavier stepped up to bat. The crowd began to sing his theme tune, attempting to cheer him on but Pipe could see that something was very wrong. Usually, Xavier's song gave him great strength, so why did he still look so upset? Xavier, what's up? Pipe, why are they chanting for me? I don't deserve all of this. I'm not talented like Gary Barlow or anyone else. I'm just gonna mess up again. Xavier had become famous after starring as the poster child for a brand of shampoo. He went viral after people thought his face looked funny. As a result, the life of fame was thrust upon him, and before he realised it, he was caught up in it all. It became an addiction. He just wanted more and more adoration. More fans singing his name. But his running with Big H had brought him painfully back down to earth. Here he was, playing at the Wii Baseball World Cup, and he wasn't even any good at baseball. He wished the crowd would stop singing. If only they'd stop singing. They're singing because they like you, Xavier because you're a nice person. When a crowd creates a chant for a player, it means that player is pretty special. They're trying to encourage you, Xavier. They want you to succeed. Xavier felt the weight lift from his shoulders. They weren't chanting because they thought he was any greater than he was. They were chanting to encourage him. He felt proud again to have his own theme tune. He could feel the music coursing through his veins. And he knew. He knew what he had to do.
Wow, I think I was wrong about that Xavier. He's pretty good. With this beautiful home run, the Steamers were only down two runs to three, but they just couldn't catch a break. Barn Owl was in next. Like Xavier, Barn Owl was really struggling. Where he usually had super fine-tuned sensors, he now found himself completely disorientated. If only his parents were here to give him some advice, they would know what to do. Suddenly, a distant who came from somewhere up in the stands. They were here. They were really here. We're so sorry, son. We finally came to see you play. We figured out if we just flew in from the top of the stadium, then we wouldn't have to buy tickets. Now, son, listen to me. Focus. You don't have to hit it hard, son. That's not your style. Just be accurate. Stay in for the team. And heeding his dad's advice, Barnell was able to sneak his shot in between the fielders for a smart single. single. Things were really looking up. Mind's brain managed to pull off the flick move he'd been trying earlier, and he struck the most powerful shot he'd ever struck. And now that the bases were loaded, all they needed was for Pipe to work a bit of magic. Having experienced the spotlight in such magnitude now, he felt he understood what Xavier had been going through with his fame, and the prejudice that Barn Owl had had to deal with, having been raised by owls. Just like the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society, the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers had plenty of things in common. Engine Room had been right. They really were a team. And filled with team spirit, Pipe drove his bat through the air and struck the ball sweetly. The Steamers were back in front by five runs to three, and although their second innings ended swiftly after, their newfound team spirit gave them an unbreakable momentum. Pipe was able to strike Victor out without him even touching the ball. Scalene was playing a blinder on first base, and to end the game in style, Barnell made one final incredible catch. That's my boy! That's my boy! And then there was Venus too. It, he made a catch as well. But the Steamers had beaten one of the tournament's favourites, and they were through to the semi-final. Wow, guys. I'm so proud of this team. I've never felt closer to a group of players. Holy heck, man. That was a real humdinger of an underarm pitch you've got there, said Saburo. Oh my goodness, thank you. Will you sign my beanie? Um, hey, Xavier? It was Big H. I think I owe you an apology. That was some incredible stuff out there. The thing is, we all love Gary Barlow very much, but he's getting old now, and we kind of need someone new to support. Would... would you mind if we changed our name to the Gary Barlow and Xavier fan club baseball society? But before Xavier could answer, the semi-final draw was being announced. And for the first semi-final, we will have the ever-intimidating Mordor Giants versus Lucia's baseball team. At even the mention of Lucia's name, the Steamers became extremely angry. But then came the next announcement. And our other semi-final will be a thrilling match between the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers and Yarikawa Prefecture. It was a real dent to the Steamers' confidence. They'd only just beaten a tournament favourite, and now they had to play another. But to be the best, they would have to beat the best. And they were so, so close now. Could the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers really reach the Wii Baseball World Cup final? So don't 